to the Every Day is a New Day podcast and live show. The inspirational show about moving forward and choosing to be more of you. Transmuting the self-doubt and stepping into courageously aligned confidence in who you uniquely are. My name is Kim O'Neill. I'm a twice certified transformational confidence coach, Reiki master, best-selling author, and former crime analyst who now helps empathic heart-centered individuals shatter the noise of self-doubt, find clarity on what self-love really looks like, and the courage to be peacefully grounded in who you've always known you are from the inside out. Join me for the live shows on Facebook and YouTube and visit KimO'NeillCoaching.com for more info. Let's get to it. All right, and welcome to another Every Day is a New Day show. So good to be here with you. You may notice, for those who are watching the video version of today's show, you may notice I have a different background as I have been shifting things in my office space, in my studio space, and uh, it feels good. It feels good. So I am excited because we have a guest today who's going to be speaking about something that may be a sensitive subject for some. And yet I have known some people who have had this challenge and this is, I believe, a very good subject to touch on, no pun intended, and to um, to bring to the light. And there's an everyday experience that comes with everything in life. And so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up today's guest. Welcome, Roman Miranov. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Um, it's a pleasure and privilege. It's, I'm, I'm glad that you're here today and that we're going to be speaking about today's topic. So I'm going to go ahead and what I'd like to do is I want to share with everyone a little bit of your background and who you are, and then uh, we'll get into our conversation. So... For all those just getting to meet Roman Mirnov for the very first time, he is a relationship breakthrough coach who helps his clients create those beautiful moments in relationships that you wish you could relive over and over. Roman received his coach training through Robin's Madonna's training, and today he's going to talk to us about overcoming porn addiction and how that enhances both a relationship and one's connection to self. Oh, Roman, so... Tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, first of all, I would like to say that, you know, I have, I resonate with the title of your show and just the show in general so much because actually one of my favorite songs, it begins literally with every day is a new day. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons. I think you know the song. Is, is that nah, the... No, you don't. Probably uh, not. No? No? Every yeah, it's by... Ben, it's. <laughs> it's sexual by the band P.O.D. and the song okay. is called Alive and nice. I, I, I would recommend watching the video because the video for that song is, is just beautiful and uh, you know heart heartbreaking okay I'll have to check it out thank you well okay tell us more tell us more yeah so I am a life coach and one of my biggest specializations is ha helping people conquer porn and masturbation and that oftentimes also leads us into relationships because one of the biggest reasons for, for men and, and for women to actually use porn and masturbation and to overuse it is because they feel lonely. So helping them create an, an intimate relationship in their life is a very good way to help them get out of this addiction. And what have you noticed about, um, you know, do you notice that there are more people who are in relationships with the porn addiction or more people who are without relationships in porn addiction? And I say that because you can be in a relationship and still be lonely. I know that. Yeah, that, that's a very insightful question, actually. I think at least in my practice, in my practice, I've seen the percentages probably between I would say 70 to 30. So 70 people are single and 30% okay. are in relationships. Wow. Interesting. Okay. And, um, I, I, not that I've searched for it, but, um, I, I don't know. Are there many coaches who even, who even discuss this subject or have this specialty, not discuss the subject, of course, I'm sure they do, but have, I, I imagine you are one of the few who 
really focuses on helping people with this is what I'm saying. I, I would say yes, but the number is definitely growing, especially because okay. of COVID and people staying at home, feeling lonely, it's like staying in the solitude and being unhappy. They go to porn to overcome all these problems, overcome, quote unquote. And so th this problem has been exacerbated by COVID and just like many other things, including relationship issues, they have been exacerbated as well. And yeah, the, the number of coaches in this area is growing. Okay. Now, do, do people tend to, I'm just going to ask some questions to, you know, further unpack this for those that, that aren't familiar with this and may have an immediate assumption about, uh, you know, about this, this topic. So, so do people start out being addicted to porn or, or is it something that evolves over time? Um, tell us a little bit more about how that, how that unfolds. Yeah, I think it, in most of, of the cases, it, it's really just something that evolves over time. And just okay. l let me share you my story quickly. Yes, please. I, like my first contact with porn was back when I was eight years old and that was 31 years ago. So I, I saw a magazine with naked women and I was pretty excited. Then I actually... Like started to started to feel some sexual pleasure by leaning against objects, and when I was twelve years old, I discovered pornography when my friend found a VHS tape that his parents had. So we watched this tape, and that like that that, that kind of feeling was was really was really addictive. And so from from that age, I was I developed this. I, I think I started developing this addiction, and it was uh, it was mm, smaller and bigger during different periods in my life. For example, it actually caused me to be quite shy, so I did not date until twenty one years old, and I, I was doing it all the time until twenty one years old, and then I started dating. So I, I met my girlfriend, my first girlfriend. And for a couple of years, I was fine. I did not need to go to porn. But when we started to have tension in our relationship, boom, I, I went back to porn as a coping mechanism. And then there, there was also one period when I used it as a coping mechanism for depression. Okay. And the final thing I, I would say is that I actually went through a divorce and I think that watching porn and being addicted actually was a, a very serious contributing factor to that divorce. Now, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate you, you sharing that something that, that people can relate to it as when you started with it and then over time, at some point you realized it became an addiction. What was that experience like when you realized, oh, it's become an addiction and it's impacting other areas of my life? Tell us about that. Yeah, I think one huge indicator was me coming home from a weekend of watching pornography and you know other stuff and masturbating. And feeling zero energy or in, like, wanting to engage with my son. So okay. I literally felt that this addiction was stealing, stealing me away from my family, stealing time and energy. And I, 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 I felt like I was wasting myself. And, and, and one big thing in this for me was always I hated myself for not having the discipline not to do it. So a lot of self-guilt involved. So I, when I started to feel this at a high level, I realized that, no, this is, this, this should stop. So, so it sounds like definitely many years into it is when it really hit home that this was having a negative impact on your life. Yeah. To put this in a perspective chronologically, I think I started to realize this was a problem when I was. 31 or 32 years old. And I, I realized that right. I need to stop it. Wow. 
Now, I, I want to ask you a question that I would typically ask probably at the end of an interview, but I want to ask you now, what is your overall Because message? you're tired of me already. No, <laughs> and no, you, no. And you not at all. No, I, I see. I always see like potential questions other people might be asking, and this one I, I believe deserves asking right now. Um, what is your overall message to people as it relates to porn addiction? Are are you you know? I'll let you answer that. What is your overall message? Yeah, the overall message is stop doing it, and you'll be able to realize your full potential. Okay. So is so is. Is your emphasis on um, encouraging people to not connect with porn in any way whatsoever or to just eliminate the addictive behavior? Look, I, I am for moderation, right? Okay. For some people, it's like with alcohol. Some people just cannot consume even a little bit of alcohol, so they need to stop at cold turkey. And for, that, for others, they can be recreational users of porn. Let's say once a week, once a month, like this. So that depends on the person. Whenever I start working with a client, I tell them to do 30 days of no porn and no masturbation. And after 30 days, we'll, we'll see how it goes and we'll just go from there. Okay. So... Let, let's let me ask you a little a little bit more you know into how do people stop a porn addiction especially if it's something they've been doing for the majority of their life okay i i use a lot of behavioral techniques so that, that's my basic strategy and to give you a clue first of all you need to make a decision because a lot of struggle, a lot of tension in yourself is caused by thinking whether I should stop or not. Will my mom be proud of that or not? <laughs> and so on. But after you make a decision, everything else is easier after that. The, the second tip I would give is you need to change your beliefs about yourself. You need to really carve out a new identity. So right now, your identity is something like, I mean, not yours, Kim, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but like for any listeners or for people who, who have this problem, is that, they, is that you think of yourself as a masturbator and someone who watches porn, and someone who needs, really needs these things to, to deal with some other issues in, the, in their life. But... You get you get you got to have this new identity, and this new identity is all about being strong, being happy, and not needing any stimulations to escape boredom or unhappiness or loneliness. That's the second thing, and the third thing that I'm 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 very big on is to to really do something new, what I call a new project, because. This will help you focus, really mm -hmm. focus on doing things other than porn and masturbation. And it also will leave little headspace for thinking about that. Okay. So that's key. So stopping the porn addiction and replacing it with something new that people enjoy. Is that correct? <sighs> You know, I, I use the word replacing cautiously because when, when I talk about replacing, I, I give them a replacement habit. That's a little bit different. Okay. So this is something that they, when they feel an urge, then they do it. Like watching 10 minutes of their favorite TV show. And that's, that's what I call a replacement habit. Okay. But a new project is something bigger. Let's say they are unhappy about their job. So a new project will be to, to get a new job or pick a new hobby like this. Okay. Oh, I had a few questions that came to mind and then they, they walked away. What, what are the questions here? Um, mm -mm -mm. Okay, so we talked about porn addiction really being derived from a sense of loneliness and definitely how it can impact a person's relationship. Do you find that porn addiction tends to 
negatively impact other areas of a person's life too? Have you noticed any patterns or themes with your clients? Of course. One of the biggest things is lack of confidence. Uh. That's, th that's one thing that people consistently realize after they stop watching porn because their levels of confidence go up. Okay. And one, one huge reason why confidence takes a hit when you watch porn is because you feel shameful. You feel, you feel guilt. You feel like you're betraying your higher self. And this, this is definitely why confidence takes a huge hit. Very, very interesting. I know ev everything has a spiritual connection and we, t we touch on a lot of spiritual topics here on this show. Um, but I had, I personally just hadn't thought about that in porn addiction and spirituality. So very interesting is, uh, does it take a hit on everyone's spirituality? I, I think, I think it does. I think okay. it does because I believe that we're spiritual first yeah, and, and then we're physical. Okay. So so what, what, what I feel about, like, let me give you something specific in terms of spirituality. I think that, you know, the, the whole, the whole, you know, sexual relationship, the whole, the intercourse is a very spiritual thing because you are there to give love, to give love, but to cherish your partner, to really, you know, to, to, make them bask in your love. And this is all about spirituality because being spiritual is all about being love. It's like Wayne Dyer says, to be good, to love people is to be God. And when you replace that spiritual act, the beautiful spiritual thing by a mechanical, emotionless masturbation, this is, this is something that goes against your spirit and it weakens it. Awesome. I see, I see, I see the connection. You're opening up space for um, greater connection with your own, your own connection with your spirit and with another person. That's, that's what I'm, what I hear you tapping into. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and actually there, there is this great book by David R. Hawkins, Power mm -hmm. Versus Force, yes. which and the, he has their table of different emotions. And at the very bottom of this table are two emotions, shame and guilt. Those are the lowest spiritual emotions. So when you feel those, that means you are basically destroying your spirit. And is it possible? Go ahead. Is it, is it possible for someone to have porn addiction and not be riddled with feelings of shame and guilt. <laughs> yes. Yes. But this is, this is quite rare. I mean, okay. like there, there, there are people who don't have those feelings because they, they just don't care. They don't have a developed sense of conscience, but you know, so let's talk about the more, more of the benefits. So you mentioned that when someone is able to overcome their porn addiction, of course, they become more confident and um, has a positive impact on relationships. Does that mean most people end up getting in relationships shortly after or, or <laughs> what? T tell us more about the benefits of overcoming porn addiction. Yeah, that would be actually a good marketing message, right? Quit, quit porn and you have, you, you get a, an intimate partner in 30 days. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's, it still requires a lot of work. Quitting porn is just, it's just the first step in the, in the journey. But then you need to, to do a lot of things, including if you're, if you're bad at dating and relationships, you need to develop those skills. Okay. So what are some other benefits? Obviously, you, you become more productive for two reasons. The first one is you, you simply get more time. You don't, you don't waste time on porn anymore. And the second thing is that you transmute the sexual energy that you've, you've been wasting before. You transmute it into your work or hobby or whatever. Okay. Any, any passion. And another big 
benefit is that your overall happiness with life increases, oh. Include, including for physical reasons, because you're saving all this energy instead of wasting it. Because se- sexual energy is, is really important. That's actually our sex drive is, is like the main driver of evolution. It's such a powerful force. It's one of the most powerful things on earth. Yeah. And another reason for overall happiness in life with life is it's, it's just because you feel in control. And that's a great feeling, especially for men, because men yes. hate that. Men want to be in control. That's such a great point, Roman. I love that you added that. So, okay, well, Roman, I asked you, uh, you, back when Roman scheduled today's interview, I asked him, you know, what does letting your light shine mean? And I bring that up because the theme for the Every Day is a New Day show this year is all about letting your light shine. Started the Letting Your Light Shine movement a couple months ago. And so Roman's answer to that question was inspiring and motivating people to realize their potential. Roman, would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, I, you know, what I want to add is, is actually when the, there is like some sort of like very quick arguments, very short arguments that I sometimes help with clients when I tell them, you know, you have creative genius in you. You have absolutely creativity like tons of creativity but you're not tapping it and when you do porn and masturbation you're actually quenching that creativity in yourself so Mm -hmm. it's it's my goal and of course the goal for my clients is to you know to reach into themselves and to realize that they cannot drown that creativity they need to they need to let their let themselves speak and let others hear it so just as you know Wayne Dyer used to say don't don't die with your music still in you so that's beautiful that's and that really reframes um for me I'm just like any addiction really but but it really helps me reframe porn addiction as a distraction distraction from being able to shine your light in more creative um positive beneficial ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I asked Roman as well. I asked him if he had an empowering quote that he'd like to share with us. And Roman shared victory belongs to the most persevering. And that's a Napoleon Bonaparte quote. Would you like to elaborate on why you like that one so much? Well, you know, in, in application to my practice with porn and masturbation, I would say that People often relapse on this journey. Okay. So let's say they they make they create a goal for this, for themselves to go to thirty days, and then they relapse at day twelve, and that's painful. And at this point, you might say, "No, I I'm not able to do it. I don't want to. Uh, it's it's too difficult, right?" But on this journey, you need you need to keep going. You need to persevere, and you will. As long as you keep trying, keep starting over. And remember, the good thing about it is that you're not really starting over after a relapse. You're starting from experience. And yes. the more relapses you have, it's actually something that brings you closer to the point where you just say, enough, I can't have any more of this. I am stopping this forever that rock bottom moment. Yes. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, we, we still have a few more minutes. We are not done yet, but I think this is a good time now to share with everyone that, um, Roman's website is romanmiranov.com and that's R O M A N M I R O N O V.com. And Roman, you have a special offer for everyone. Would you like to share that with them? Yeah, absolutely. Please go to my website, hit the contact tab, ask me for for a free breakthrough session and mention that you're coming off Kim's podcast and I'll be happy to give you a 30% discount. 
Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Roman. Appreciate that. And, and yes, a no book, a no fee br breakthrough session with Roman at romanmiranov.com and get that 30% off. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay. <clears throat> For those that are familiar with the show, I'd like to pull a card at, towards the end of our conversation just to expand on the conversation and the inspiration and the messages that want to come through. And like I have been doing with my guests, I presented to Roman three different potential card decks to pull from. And um, he chose one, but I have to, I just have to, Roman, do you mind if I share with everyone the three decks that I, <laughs> I presented to you? Sure. There's, there's, there's no harm in a little, a little laughter here. Okay. So I presented to Roman, uh, inner peace cards by Dr. Wayne Dyer. The, the box is falling apart. Uh, I presented to him power thought cards by Louise Hay. And I presented to him how to love yourself cards by Louise Hay. And, uh, and Roman, what was the joke that you made? <laughs> yeah. The joke was, is that we don't want to talk about loving loving yourself and self-love when we, you know, discuss masturbation and <laughs> porn because the, the, yeah, this is ambiguous, very ambiguous. Well, I, I will affirm that, that self-love is important for everybody. And I mean that on an emotional, spiritual, divinely connected, um, in that kind of a way. And, um, of course, I think our audience can understand the humor in, in not pulling from a, how to love yourself card deck for this particular conversation. And so Roman selected inner peace cards by Dr. Wayne Dyer. And so Roman, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take the cards out and I just do some light shuffling first here. I'm get comfortable in my chair. I love to pull cards, Roman. I started pulling cards uh, weekly on the Every Day is a New Day show and our Monday Inspirational Message Mondays. And um, it's a lot of fun. And so... Um, yeah, I'm, pulling cards is way better than pulling teeth. It's... Thank you! Yes! But it's exactly true. I agree with that. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm just doing some light shuffling here. So Roman, now when you are ready, go ahead and tell me when to stop. And whichever card is on top, that will be our, our message. Okay. Okay. Stop. Okay. So the card right here on top says, I meditate every day to nurture my soul. And the back says, meditation gives you the opportunity to come to know your invisible self. It shatters the illusion of your separateness. What, what are your thoughts on that card, Roman? I absolutely second that. As I told you, I'm a fan of Wayne Dyer and I, I'm, I'm fellow. I am a fan of Buddhism where these ideas come from. And this is something that I do on a daily basis. I meditate and nice. I really, I really see my life as a journey toward enlightenment and feeling that oneness with the world. Awesome. Although, and, although I yeah. still have such a long way to go. We all do. We all do. As long as we're human. Yes, there's there's always more work to do for sure. Um, and I just want to also point out that on this card are several candles reminding you you have an inner light. So whatever you may feeling, maybe feeling shameful about or guilty about or whatever, your inner light is still there. And meditation is a great way to connect with that. And so as I begin to close out the show, I do want to remind everyone that if you have not yet joined the Let Your Light Shine movement, it is free and easy. And it's an opportunity for you to claim that you believe in yourself, that you see and own your own light, because in the doing of that, you are an inspiration, empowering other people to own their light as well. And I personally believe that in a world filled with light, that's practically heaven on earth. So... <laughs> So Roman, thank you so much for being here today. It was wonderful to connect with you and hear your, your wisdom on porn addiction and how you help people in, in overcoming that and in being able to not only connect more deeply with themselves in an authentic way, but then of course be able to feel more confident and have healthy relationships. Thank you so much, Kim. It's It's been a privilege and an, an honor for me to be with you. 
Thank you, and you're welcome. And thank you to today's live audience, whether you were with us live on Facebook or YouTube. It was wonderful having you here. Please let us know what your thoughts are throughout from this conversation. What's come up for you? What ahas do you have? Does this possibly shift how you perceive porn addiction for yourself or maybe someone you know that is that is having this particular challenge? And are you able to see a light beyond the, that experience. And uh, I hope so. I hope so. So with that, have an amazing day, everybody. We have another amazing interview coming out actually tomorrow, tomorrow, which is pre-recorded. Definitely stay tuned to all the podcast platforms, Facebook and YouTube for that. And, uh, and then of course we have more live shows happening next week. So have an amazing day, everyone. Again, thank you, Roman, for being here and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye-bye.